Today's video is sponsored by Brilliant. First off, welcome to the new temporary studio setup today. We are moving, so this is kind of something I just threw together. Like the last studio, this will probably unfold as time goes on as I make little refinements, and we'll do a video about all that stuff. So today we've got the Orochi V2 wireless in-house from Razer. It's designed primarily for portability, and at a glance, it looks an awful lot like the G305 shape. But it's not it exactly. It's also got the Hero Sensor, it's got hyperspeed wireless, a couple extra tricks up its sleeve, and it's got a much lighter weight. For you fans of the egg, this might be exactly what you've been waiting for. You ready? Let's go! So the Orochi V2 retails for $69.99 US, and it comes in either black, white, or custom for an upcharge, which we'll talk about in a bit. It's symmetrical, but no lefty support. It's wireless, of course, but you'll get a couple different options, either 2.4 gigahertz hyperspeed or Bluetooth. For transparency, Razer did send these out for review today. As always, it doesn't change anything I have to say about it. There was no other compensation involved, and they didn't get to hear or see any aspect of this review before you did. There's a lot of details here, but let's talk shape first, because in hand, it's really not as close to the G305 as you might think just by looking at the press photos. For starters, it's shorter, with a length of 108 millimeters versus 116 millimeters. They're both around 60 millimeters wide at the midsection, and they're both just shy of 38 millimeters tall. The Orochi has its tallest point near the middle of the mouse, with pretty sharp tapers front and back. This allows for pretty low front triggers for better control, and a rear that can really tuck back into your hand for a claw grip, or gives you plenty of leeway under your hand for fingertip. You definitely can feel that reduced length and that hump being moved slightly forward. This feels like one of the safest shapes out there. Like regardless of hand size, I feel pretty comfortable saying you're gonna find a grip style that works for you. The outside edge flares out a bit from front to back, but from top to bottom, it's mostly flat. Over on the thumb side, you get a big groove that flares out at the bottom, as opposed to how the 305 just kind of tapers in from top to bottom. They have really strong side button placement here as they either sit right on top of where your thumb is resting or directly under your thumb. The position and the protrusion off the body are great here, and they're tensioned in such a way that you're not gonna trigger them if you're resting right on top of them. They feel really good, really solid, with minimal pre and post travel and no play to speak of. I really like these. The top shell is a single piece and the triggers do have a slight comfort groove. Underneath those switches are Razer's V2 mechanical switches. Not optical, but what they actually are is a custom version of the KLGM 4.0. A pretty surprising choice from Razer, definitely a welcome one. If you haven't liked the click feel or the sound of the optical switches before, you're not gonna have to worry about that here. If you've never used KLGM 4.0s before, these feel and sound really, really good. The triggers do have a mild bit of both pre and post travel, but nothing game breaking at all and no side play to speak of either. Also on top, you have a single recessed button for DPI, comes with five levels by default. The scroll feels similar to other Razer offerings, but it rides higher off the frame versus like the Viper Ultimate, which I really like. Unfortunately, it is a little noisier if you're scrolling real fast than some of Razer's recent offerings. You can definitely tell that the shell is amplifying some of the sound. I like the feel of the shell here. It's matte, slightly textured, but it's following kind of that trend of having a no coating type of coating. Razer will also happily sell you some universal grip tape as a $10 add-on. These come in a few different custom cut options. The reason why I really like these is because when I use a smaller mouse, I need to hold that consistently the same way every time. If I use those little dots to kind of indicate where my fingers are supposed to be when I pick this thing up, then I know I've got the same grip every time I grab this mouse. Overall build quality here also feels very good. I would have no second thoughts about throwing this in my bag. As soon as everything opens back up, I could definitely see myself sitting in a coffee shop somewhere and just wrecking some Call of Duty lobbies, then flipping over to Bluetooth mode and like learning about finance. I've really become fascinated lately with investments and crypto, and I genuinely want to learn the numbers behind these systems and not take investment advice from like subreddits or Twitter memes. I learn best by doing, and today's sponsor, Brilliant, helps me do exactly that. They take big concepts like math for quantitative finance or cryptocurrency, break them down into simple concepts, and then build them back up to a meaningful conclusion. It's a great way to learn. Tons of stuff, actually. Anything that uses math and science as a backbone. Two subjects I'm not inherently good at. Brilliant makes it much easier for me to get my head around those concepts. If you're ready to get smarter, visit Brilliant org slash bad seed tech. It's free to sign up and the first 200 of you that do will get 20% off your annual membership. Big thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video and thank you for your time.
I really appreciate it. So on the underside, you have PTFE glides for days. They're large front, large rear, and a pretty generous ring around the sensor. You'll also see your mode select button under there. You may also notice the sensor placement is really far forward on this mouse. This is intentional, and it's based directly from feedback on Reddit. The idea here is that with it pushed forward, you get a more pronounced left to right movement, either with fingertip or wrist aiming. The way they've designed the battery system here is borderline genius because it functions not only as a power, but also as a weight management system. Underneath that top shell, you have the ability to use a double A or a triple A battery. So you can pick where on the scale you want to land between battery life or weight with the standard double A weighing the most and a lithium triple A weighing the least. The battery slots are designed diagonally across the width of the mouse to allow for better weight balance. You also have storage for the dongle inside the body as well. Using a lithium triple A, I get 64 grams on my scale. A lithium double A, which is included in the box, brings the weight to 72 grams. A standard alkaline double A brings the weight to around 80 grams. And you can see the same figures on the G3 305 there for reference. It is worth noting that the single top shell design of the Orochi V2 prevents you from running it with the cover off. It's a common weight reduction tactic for the G305. There's also loads of aftermarket shell mods to further strip the weight of the 305, none of which are necessary on the Orochi. With no RGB anywhere to speak of, battery life can go to a max of 950 hours in Bluetooth mode and 425 hours in hyperspeed wireless using the included lithium AA battery. Using an alkaline AA yields 260 hours. These figures will vary based on the size and the technology of the battery you're using, and it should be pretty obvious, but there is no support for the Razer charging dock here. The dongle is interesting because it's the first time we've seen Razer's new unified dongle technology, where a single dongle can also pair with like the Naga Pro, the Death Adder V2 Pro, and the Black Widow V3 Pro keyboard. Sadly, no joy for the Black Shark wireless headset. I do want to really take my time and do some long-term testing using their wireless keyboard and their mouse on that unified dongle, but I definitely like the direction they're heading with this. In terms of gaming performance, I'm in love with this mouse. It's the hyperspeed wireless and the hero sensor we know in a compact lightweight shell that in my hand offers a ton of maneuverability. You can even game competitively with the Bluetooth mode though. Number one, why would you? And number two, please don't. The Orochi is compatible with Synapse V3, but it doesn't need to be. There is a single hardware profile on the mouse that will store all your settings. So you can go in and customize your DPI levels, your rebinding and set your lift off distance if you want, and then that will travel with the mouse. If black or white is just a little too pedestrian for you, you can also opt to pay $20 more for access to one of a bunch of custom options that are available only directly from Razer. There's a few designs in here directly from the community as well, and you can opt to have your gamer tag added if you like. Extras, customs, add-ons aside, what we have here is a really, really solid wireless gaming mouse at a budget price. I totally understand that their intent here was to make a mouse for portable gaming, but in the process, they've created created a really compelling desktop FPS mouse. I normally main a Viper Ultimate, more so lately the Piranha Mods custom based on that same shape. Some variant of the Viper Ultimate has been my longest running main. I've mained it since the day it hit the market basically. Not anymore. Now it's this. The main reasons are the scroll and side buttons extending further from the frame, the weight, of course, and the fact that the rear of the mouse is basically sheared off, so it doesn't fill my palm as much, making vertical flicks much easier to hit. I don't even miss the optical switches, as my Piranha Custom doesn't use them either. From a customer and a reviewer standpoint, it is utterly baffling to me that the G305 has been as wildly popular as it is, and Logitech has done nothing to refresh that mouse. They left the door open a little for Razer on this one, and Razer kicked it off the hinges. After some really mediocre peripheral reviews lately and me kind of growing bored of the mouse market as a whole, Razer drops this little gem that's quickly become my main and takes my top recommendation as the wireless mouse to own, even over others costing much more. Big props to Ben and his team at Razer. Listening to the community works, and if every large company's peripheral division operated the way Razer's mouse division operates, we'd all be better for it. I only have one question. With all the value packed in this little mouse, where is that going to leave us in terms of price point for the Viper Mini Ultimate that everyone's been waiting for? As always, links down in the description if you want to get your hands on one of these. Any questions, hit me in the comments. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button. And until next time, stay up.